Hello guys. In this video I want to share uh, my new approach of creating unpredictable dynamic range system. It can actually be used for any participation like the fog and the snow etc. So this approach is uh, better. It actually uh, is inside this one function. I'll tell everything right in a minute. Also, I'll explain this approach, how it works, and why it's so awesome. Uh, this can... Uh, so, for all of you, this might look uh, a little complicated, uh, but it's very uh, performance-friendly uh, approach. Uh, my close friend helped me with uh, the iteration here, so I'll tell this trick uh, right in a minute. And now let's talk about the approach. So, as you can see from this screen, we have the timeline from 0 to 24 hours. It's the length of our day. We decide how many times uh, a day can the rain start. Uh, so, uh, the black one is the rain period bound. So, if we, like, in case of this example, we have uh, the value of uh, time periods is 3. So, it means that each bound uh, where the rain should start uh, is divided by 8 hours. So, from 0 to 8, from 8 to 16, from 16 to 24. Uh, this cycle runs every day. Once our 24 hour uh, exists. Uh, so, uh, next, uh, in the bound of each uh, rain period, we need to decide two points. It's when the rain should start and when it should stop. Uh, for this one, I use uh, simple math. So we uh, need to add our minimum and maximum bound of each period. So 0, 8, 8, 16, 16, 24. And uh, divide it by 2 to find out the median. This median is uh, for calculating the random points for the start and stop uh, bounds. So, as for example, from 0 to 4, from 4 to 8, it can be uh, like from... So, it can actually make something like 2 and 6. It means that from 2 o'clock till 6, it will be raining. And from 0 to 2 and from 6 to 8, it will be no rain. Uh, this system uh, works uh, perfectly fine. Also, you can use random uh, number of uh, rain period. So, in my case here, as you can see, I have a rain count and I have a random integer. It means that if it's zero, it means the whole day will be without any uh, participation. Uh, you can actually make it quite... Uh, more complicated, so you can make a 50-50 chance, like uh, 50 chance it will be uh, no rain and 50 chance it will be random uh, number of times per day, how many times the rain should be. Uh, also make sure that this number uh, uh, is not very high, because like uh, you don't need to have the uh, weather like London has, so it rains six to seven times a day. Uh, and I find that uh, integer for four is the maximum amount that is actually quite good uh, to have. Uh, also, division 24 by 1, 2, 3 and 4 uh, will return the whole number, so it's actually quite good not to deal with the float. So that's why I use integer here. So I hope you understand this idea. Now I'll show you this function and show how it works. So first of all, let's talk about uh, receiving our current time, because as you can see, uh, we have 24 hours and we need to have this day cycle. So for this, I use simple math. Uh, my uh, approach here is using a timer and I have update frequency, so because uh, I do a uh, game for, with the top-down setting and uh, I don't see sky often. Update uh, 
of the whole system uh, is not done uh, every every second, every frame. Uh, right now it's for the sake of the demo 0 0.4 uh, and uh, it's actually 0 0.2 and so on and in case you have uh, the day lands like 30 minutes and so on you can use uh, this uh, better not to use the tick so update frequency or in case you have tick you provide here is like the delta tick delta time divided by this calculation day length in minutes it will return uh, how long the day uh, from 0 to 24 will uh, actually contain actually last so multiply by 6 divide by 24 then we uh, uh, add everything to our current time it's the time from uh, uh, from which uh, the day starts you decide it also on your own and everything is like the delta time then we need to deal with 24 hours bounds for this i use select and delta time goes to a 24 minus delta time and I take absolute value so it will be uh, always positive and I check whether delta time is uh, less or equals 24 if it's so I go with the delta time if it's not uh, I subtract I actually use this calculation and it will return the proper time so let me show you current time here weather day length in minutes one and print and as you can see my time is changing 18 and so on let me make update frequency higher and you'll see so everything works fine So, going next, we have delta time, we have current time, now, here I have toggle rain, it's the function, this one is not interested, uh, you should not be interested, it's uh, like for source uh, rotation, so we have delta time, we have current time, now let's talk about toggle rain, this function. I have uh, first launch, uh, it's by default true it means when i start the whole cycle this one uh, like my game can start uh, not from zero or 24 hours but in the middle of the day it means that i need some uh, logic to deal with uh, the first day uh, running through this cycle so that's why uh, the first launch is true and uh, then i also check on this condition uh, whether the time is high or equals 24 it means that i should start calculating uh, the rain uh, amount like calculate the whole cycle the whole rain system here i have rain count i'll show you so that's my uh, variables uh, random integer it means uh, that uh, every time that i have the new day this one will be recalculated and it means that i have fully uh, unpredictable weather also it checks whether it's the first launch if it's so it turns uh, turn it off and if it's false it will simply do the whole uh, calculations and so on next i decide the rain period so it's uh, the bounds of each period like this uh, black one so if it's like three, I have three bounds from zero to eight, from eight to 16, from 16 to 24 and so on. Once uh, I ran through the cycle, as you can see, uh, I need to have some sort of uh, the array uh, where each uh, whole number or like, I don't remember this, uh, word i need to check it how it's spell let me wait, quickly check pam 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 so even 
even and uneven, right? So each even number will uh, will be the rain start. Each uneven number will be the rain stop. That's how I use it in my array. So every time I have uh, the new day, I need to clear the array. So uh, I will be operating all on the new numbers, and I don't need uh, this array to be uh, as uh, to be very much, uh, very big. So I need to clear it up. Next, uh, I iterate. For, uh, first integer index should be one because uh, I don't need to have uh, like if I start using index and multiply everything by zero, it will return zero. So I need to first index to be one. So this system will work fine. Also, uh, the trick that I was uh, going to tell you is uh, that I'm iterating. I'm adding everything and I'm iterating uh, in this array uh, from the end. So uh, if I print out uh, the rain schedule, let me check. Let me check one more time. No rain, no rain. So guys, uh, I found out where uh, I have made a mistake uh, in showing you the, the thing with the array. So let me show it one more time. So as you can see right now, I had an array where the first element is our last element. So by default, the then start with the smaller numbers, so like it's two, uh, 2, 4, 9, 9, 13, 18, 18, 21. But as you can see, the first element right now is 21. And I will be starting with this one. Because uh, uh, due to some performance uh, issues, my friend told me that uh, once you start iterating with the uh, last index and you uh, like uh, remove the last index, it's better. Uh, and more performance friendly than if you iterate it from the first. So that's why this uh, system looks a little bit complicated. So let me just quick uh, add everything back so we won't be frustrating. And yep, here. I'll check. Yep. Everything's fine. So, rain count minus index plus one multiplied by rain period. That's how we uh, receive our minimum bound. This one, our rain start. Next, we subtract our rain period and we receive our period max bound. Our, this one, uh, red. Uh, sorry, not those, but we receive the first one, this, uh, like, 0 and 8, uh, and also 8 to 16, right, so those bounds, the black one. Now, with this one, uh, this calculation will help us to get those values, the green and uh, red dot. We add everything, we divide it by two and then we use random uh, with this uh, sort of uh, qui. So the first one here is minimum, then minimum is to max, next one max to minimum and this one to max. So the rain end hour, rain start hour. Uh, next we check whether rain end hour is higher than our current time. If it's so, we add the last element as our first element. Next condition, we check whether start hour is higher than our current hour. If it's so, we also add the second one, our start hour to our array. It means first even, uneven, even and uneven. Uh, and as we are iterating through the back of our array, this one will, our, will be our start point, this one will be our end point. So, one more time, check everything up. Now, 
the x on complete of this cycle, I set the global variable called rain global. Uh, I get length of my array and check whether division by two will uh, return uh, even or so whether it will be even or uneven. If it's so, if it's true, it means that I should activate my particle system of rain, this one, Niagara. If it's not true, then it should be deactivated. This one runs only once. This condition, whether we don't uh, have this one, we should check every uh, frame or like the frequency that you added. Uh, those conditions to check whether we have rain inside our uh, whole uh, day lands. So we check whether rain uh, schedule lands the length of our array higher than zero. If it's so, we can iterate because we have some rain uh, points to activate. Next, we check whether our current time is higher or equal of the last index of our array. If it's so, then we have the sequence. We should remove our last index because we don't need to have it inside our array. Uh, and that will be like our cycle through the array. Every time we start our rain, we destroy our point, uh, and so on, and so on, and so on, until our uh, whole array uh, will be empty. Then the new day comes and the new cycle begins. Also, we have a sort of switcher uh, due to our rain global uh, variable. If it's not true, we should activate. If it's false, we should deactivate our rain. Uh, that's how this switcher works, and that's how the whole system works all together. So, let me quickly show you one more time, so you can replicate it. And of course, uh, how I get my day uh, time. So guys, that's it. I hope you like this uh, tutorial. Uh, so I have this code, I have Patreon in case you want to support me. Uh, and yep, everything is under the description to this video. And see you soon, guys.